Hey everyone, it's Scott with NewPortraitBiz.com and what I want to do today is shoot this quick video about one of the tips that I went over in a recent blog post. And uh, I went over three things that I see a lot of uh, beginners but also people that have been doing it a little while um, when they're using digital backgrounds and props and uh, and how they can, uh, they can make their images more believable, more realistic and just look better overall. And one of the mistakes that I'm going to be talking about in this one, in this video, is uh, sizing and scaling of the subject, okay? Now we do have a lot of digital creations, digital backgrounds and props that use props like this. Okay, these are like real props, but yet you're inserting a, a child or a baby inside of these props and a lot of times you'll get scaling issues where you'll have people, they won't know how to scale it to the size of the prop, okay? And it's a very common problem. And there's a few things that I do to, to make it so I can scale them appropriately and so this way here they look like they're really in there, it makes it more believable. All right, so here, let me just give you an example. Let's just say that this baby was this big in there, and trust me when I say that I've seen this, not in this particular one, but I've seen where people will put a baby in there, and it just looks like the baby's a giant, right? I mean, it's like this This is a little tiny thing, and this the baby is, is squished in there, right? Um, and in some cases, hey, maybe the baby's chubby, you know, good for them. Uh, but no, uh, you know, sometimes we'll see that, or sometimes we'll see this where you'll see the prop and it looks like, uh, you know, honey, I shrunk the kids, right? You know, maybe even down into there, like, you know, really small. And it just doesn't look believable. It's just too much, okay? But here's the thing. Here's what I, here's what I want to share with you. And here's the very important thing. When you have a digital uh, background or prop that you're using, mainly the prop, you want to turn off, if you're using some of our stuff, you have the cover-up layer, which you're familiar with. You turn that off, and then what you want to do is just have the baby or the child in there like they normally would be in there. So this baby right now is sized pretty close to being where they would be, okay? And you can see that they would be sitting on the base of this, or maybe there was even a towel in here, okay? But the knees are definitely the right size as far as the width-wise in there. Now, if I bring the baby back up to where it was like in here... Well, it could be in there, but it doesn't look as believable. Like that that would baby would be very tight and snug in there, okay? So you definitely want to use the prop itself and the bottom, okay, if the if there's going to be a subject in there as part of that guideline. All right? So you want to you want to use that uh, as your guide. All right? That's how I usually do it. All right, and there's other things that I'm, I'm going to show you in one other um, example here of how you can use different components within the child and the prop to get a size. I mean, in this case too, you know, the, the rope around here is is bigger than the child's hand, so you wouldn't want the child's hand to be bigger than this. You, you just wouldn't, right? So you're going to use that as a reference in a sense. Uh, so that's kind of one way of doing it, and that's one of the common problems that I see a lot. So let's turn that back on, and then you can see. The other thing I see too is that sometimes the baby will be too high. Maybe the baby's like that. So maybe the baby was sitting on something. Who knows? But for the most part, you want the baby down in like it normally would be in there. Okay, so maybe like that, or maybe even down a little bit more, and then we know that that's where the baby would be, all right? And the other thing I just want to mention, too, is, is you know, this is just a little side tip. You don't always want the baby technically centered. Maybe have the baby off to the side a little bit, okay? Making it more believable, like the baby's almost ready to lean up against the side of it, okay? That's just a little side tip there for you. All right, so let me give you one more example. Okay, so this is another example here, and this is how I did this. Now, let's just say that the baby was, they had the baby this big, okay? And I've seen this, okay? I've seen this happen. Let's say that they had the baby that big, okay? Well, this baby's eyes are bigger than the lamb's eyes. And in some cases, maybe that's the case, but not this drastic. That just does not look believable, all right? So what I like to do is try to size the eyes, Okay, if I have something like that, or like I had mentioned before, uh, you know, hands, right? We know how big a baby's hand is. Well, we also know generally how big objects are within something. So if this was a wheelbarrow, we would know that the wheelbarrow handle is probably an inch and a half to two inches thick. It's pretty thick. Well, we wouldn't want the baby's hand to be close to that size, right? because we know the baby's hand isn't that size. You get the idea. You want to use things to reference. So I'm going to scale him back down to kind of match up with the eyes. And if you even, if you wanted to, you could even take, uh, you know, the child's eye, maybe take a copy of it and bring it over and see if it's, if it's the right size. But you can almost eye, eye it up by looking at it. 
no pun intended there, eye it up, get it? Eye it up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you know, so you want to use things like that. And like I said before, you don't want the baby too high or the child too high. You know, you want the baby to be, um, you know, position properly. So that's uh, that's how you do it. And the other thing is here, the side note here is, is when you're doing something like this, I see a lot of times people ask, or, you know, they'll, they'll email me and they'll say, you know, Scott, how do you pose the child? Well, if the child's sitting in something like this, or you know what the child's going to be sitting in or something similar, well, then have that child sitting in that type of position. You know, so that's just a, a little side tip there as well. But yeah, size, sizing uh, your subject appropriately is huge. Um, because like, like I said, if you have the baby this big, it's just not believable, right? I mean, the baby's huge. Or same thing could be the baby's this big, you know? Now all of a sudden it's like, seriously, that doesn't even look right, right? So use those different components uh, that I just shared with you, those different ideas and tips um, to make your images uh, look better and uh, in more, more believable, more realistic. All right, so that's going to wrap up this one. I will shoot a couple more, though, that are going to be talking about those other two tips, and I'll leave a, a link down below this video where you can go over to that blog post that I wrote that's got uh, the three tips um, kind of in like a step-by-step -step, uh, manner over on the blog. All right, so once again, I'm Scott with newportraitbiz.com, and I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.